Hey, it's Bobby Rio, and I want to talk about how to spark that approach mojo you might not currently feel. Now, without that mojo, it's always going to be difficult approaching women, and it'll be nearly impossible to attract them. So let's quickly recap the last video. So cold approaching sucks. I think we can all agree on that, but there are ways to make it a whole lot easier. We talked about how to make cold approaching a little bit more warm by doing things like standing in a location that allows a conversation to happen more naturally, uh, like the bathroom, for instance, or pumping a keg at a party, or standing outside where girls go to smoke. We also talked about how the easiest ways to have success approaching women is to put yourself in front of a starving crowd. And by that, I mean women who are more likely to be out there looking to meet a guy like you. It could be something as specific as a singles event, like a cruise or speed dating, um, but it also involves developing an overall better strategy for anywhere you go. For instance, uh, for those of you who like going to bars, I can tell you right now, weeknights, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, are much better than weekends to find hungry girls. And Saturday is 10 times better than Friday for meeting women. Here's why. Saturday is generally boyfriend night. If you're in a relationship, it's pretty damn likely you'll be with your boyfriend on a Saturday night, probably going to the movies or out to dinner or spooning on a couch watching something off Netflix. So if a girl's at a bar on a Saturday, it's a pretty clear indication she doesn't have a boyfriend. And chances are she also went out Friday night too, which means only the super hungry available girls trek out to bars two nights in a row. And finally, we talked about another way to make it even easier to approach women, which is to start to recognize which girls are giving you the approach me signals. Approach me signals can be anything from a girl casually making her way closer to where you are. Uh, it can be something as blatant as continually catching her looking at you, um, only to quickly turn away. You have to be careful with that one, though. Um, if you're the type of guy who stares at girls, even unconsciously, me and my friends actually call that the eye of the rapist, she might be looking at you in fear. So, you know, you, you got to learn to distinguish the signals. But seriously, when you can spot which girls are displaying an openness to talk to you, it makes cold approaching a lot easier and a lot more likely that you get her back to your bedroom. But finally, we talked about something else. We talked about how all the advantages in the world, good location, good lines, interested girls, all these advantages don't mean a thing if your mind is working against you when it comes time to approach women. And if you're like most guys, then I bet you have definitely felt the sensation of your mind working against you. Your mind will always find reasons not to approach, whether it keeps reminding you that you don't know what to say, or that the conversation's going to stall out, or that she probably has a boyfriend, or that she seems busy, or that you're tired, or that you're just not feeling it today. Your mind never short on excuses not to approach. That fucker can be relentless too, no matter how much you try to fight it. Uh, have you ever experienced any of those excuses? Nod your head yes, because I know you have. We all have. Let me ask you something. Did you ever get the feeling that you're missing your mojo around women? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you about three silent killers of your mojo around women, and then I'm going to tell you how to get your mojo back. But first, I want to tell you a quick little story. About 10 years ago, I was at a giant outdoor block party pig roast. Back then, I had no game. I had very little experience with women, and worse, I was ridiculously shy. Like, like so shy that people would ask what was wrong with me shy, or think I was a dumb mute. It was that bad. Well, anyway, at this pig roast, for some reason, I was feeling good. Yeah, I'm sure the few Coronas I had drank helped, but trust me, back then, all the beers in the world couldn't break through my shyness. It was usually that impenetrable. But tonight, I just felt it. Maybe you know that feeling, like you're just on, like luck is on your side, like the stars are aligned, like you know that tonight's just a little bit different than the other nights. So sure enough, I started playing beer pong with this cute little girl, Evelyn. Now in all honesty, my standards back then were not as high as they are now, so she could have been a train wreck, but back then, she was definitely one of the cutest girls I had flirted with, and she was digging me, and my shyness was almost non-existent. After winning our second game of beer pong, me and Evelyn were making out, like hardcore hooking up. 
if I had any game back then, I probably could have dragged her behind some bush and slept with her. But I was an amateur back then and just very happy just to kiss her. Uh, one of Evelyn's friends had to leave the party, so just as quickly as she came into my life, poof, she was gone. But I was still on. I was still feeling it. And after hooking up with Evelyn, I was feeling damn near unstoppable. I spotted my friend Kevin. He was casually standing there talking to two girls uh, 20, 20 feet away. Now, normally, a scene like that would have frightened the hell out of me. I would have needed Kevin to call me over and introduce me. And even then, I would have felt really uncomfortable and full of anxiety talking to these girls that I, that I didn't really know. But for some reason, that fear was gone, and I just made my way toward them without even thinking. Exactly what I said or how it all went down is still a bit of a blur, but within 30 seconds of introducing myself to the group, I was making out with one of the girls, and I took her hand and led her to a more quiet location, and we made out for another 15 minutes or so. I don't remember her name, and I can tell you almost nothing about her, but the story is legendary amongst my friends who were at the party. Mind you, over the years, I've made friends with a lot of like pickup artists and stuff who do this stuff routinely, and I myself have repeatedly had nights where I've hooked up with more than one girl in a night since then, but this was at the height of my shyness, and my friends had rarely even seen me talk to a girl, let alone pull a stunt like that. Have you ever had a night like that? Or watched one of your friends have a night like that, where you were just on, like you were in the zone, all your normal fear and all your anxiety was gone, and you just had this feeling of being fucking unstoppable. If you never experienced it with girls, you probably experienced it in, in other areas of your life. Uh, for me, it was basketball. I was never a great basketball player. But some days, man, I would just be on fire making shot after shot. And the ball wouldn't even leave my hands. And I'd already know it was going to sink in the basket. Like, all the normal doubts when I was about to shoot were gone. It was like, it's going in. And it would. It would go in. I want you for a minute to stop and imagine having that feeling around women of just being on, of being outside of your head, and just in a state where things are flowing almost naturally, almost without thought. Just imagine that for a second. That's sort of what that night at the pig roast was for me. It was like all the doubt, all that second guessing had left my mind, and I was just completely natural, just completely myself. Now, the worst thing about that night is that for a long time, I couldn't tap into what I felt at the pig roast. And I went back to being my shy old self around women. And despite my friends continually reminding me about the superpowers I displayed that night, I just couldn't channel it again. Now, chances are you've heard the term mojo before. What happened that night was my mojo was in full force. I was firing on all cylinders. I was on, I was in the zone, and nothing was going to stop me. Mojo is something that you can't quite explain, but you know exactly when you're feeling it. And you know exactly when it's missing. Now I want to ask you something, and I want you to be honest with yourself. On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rank your daily mojo around women? Let's say one is you avoid being around women completely because you feel so inferior and so much anxiety that you just don't even want to be around them. And let's say 10 is you ooze so much charisma that girls are practically throwing their panties at you. How much mojo do you feel on an average day? Three, four, five, six if you're super lucky? Now, think of someone you know who's operating at a seven, eight, or nine. They make it look easy, don't they? They don't think about what they have to say to a girl. They never worry if a girl might be busy. The thought that she might not want to talk to you wouldn't even cross your mind. Even if she's around other guys, you always kind of think that you're the better choice. So nothing intimidates you. Every line you say is perfect, not because it was tested or planned, but because of the act, exact opposite, because everything you're saying is coming out completely natural, completely free of analyzation, and it's being said with complete confidence. That, my friend, is mojo. Have you ever heard the term setting yourself up for failure? Chances are that you're doing just a handful of things that are killing your mojo around women, and by doing them, you're actually setting yourself up for failure. 
Let's talk about three of the silent killers of your mojo around women. The first thing I want to talk about and the first killer of your mojo around women is something that I refer to as the James Bond complex. Do you ever watch James Bond seduce a woman? It's nearly friggin' perfect. It's pretty much flawless. Like everything he says comes out super smooth and the woman basically falls into bed with him. She's basically powerless against his charm. Unfortunately, that is not real life. My buddy Rob Judge likes to say that pickup is messy. What does he mean by that? He means if you sit back and watch a successful pickup, if you're sitting in a bar and you're overhearing a conversation of a a pickup that's going to end with the guy getting laid, it probably doesn't look remotely like a James Bond pickup. In fact, it probably looks pretty damn ugly. And if you're sitting there watching, you're probably thinking, he's never going to get her. But he does. Why? Because the bar is not nearly as high as you think. You can stumble. You can say a few stupid things. You can appear a little nervous. Even accidentally spit when you talk and still get the girl. Yup, I actually hooked up with a girl after approaching her and I drunkenly spitting in her face as I talked. Uh, She actually stopped talking and wiped the spit off her face. And within uh, an hour or so later, was hooking up with me. Women are very forgiving. But you see, most of us suffer from perfection paralysis. We sit and we wait for the perfect moment to approach. We try to think of the perfect line. We have this image that we're supposed to look like James Bond approaching her and stealthily seducing her within seconds. Let me tell you the biggest reason why this kills your mojo. Because it takes all the freaking fun out of it. You're creating a standard for yourself that you can't possibly live up to. Let's face it, neither one of us are James Bond, and we never will be. But the great thing is, we don't have to be. In fact, it can actually hurt you to be super smooth. See, if you come up to a woman and you come across as like this smooth, talking gigolo, a woman's guard will immediately go up, her defense mechanism kicks into high gear, she immediately begins to shit test you, and if she's with a group of friends, they'll start cock blocking you. Uh, they, they, like, the women have their, their alarm turned on when, when, when they get this James Bond type character, and they want to kind of crush them. So you're much better off going in under the radar anyway and not coming across as that super smooth guy. See, not only does the James Bond complex keep you from approaching, it actually makes it less likely that you're going to succeed when you do approach. I actually have a way of opening that I'm going to tell you about in the next video. I call it the Swiss Army Opener, and it allows you to completely bypass this James Bond complex because it starts a conversation before you even have time to overthink it. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. You'll learn about the Swiss Army Opener in the next video, but for now... Just get the James Bond fantasy out of your head. All right, let's talk about the next killer of your mojo around women. I call it playing on the road. Have you ever heard the term home field advantage? It's a sports saying, and it means that the team playing on familiar turf has a huge advantage. How does this relate to approaching women? It means that if you play the game in unfriendly environments or places where the odds are stacked against you, you're bound to lose. Let me give you an example. I can't dance. I admit it. When I dance, I look like a retarded monkey. Yet for years, I was insistent on following my friends to dance clubs. The minute I walked into one of these places, I felt like the New York Yankees walking into Fenway Park. Felt totally uncomfortable in the atmosphere, totally like something was just not right. I had very little in common with the guys fist pumping on the dance floors. Those guys, they had the home field advantage. I was out of my element. Plus, I had an underlying dread that a woman was going to ask me to dance, and my insane lack of coordination and rhythm would be exposed to the entire place. Needless to say, I hardly ever approached a woman in those kind of places. And the few that approaches that I did make, they were almost never successful. You got to play to your strengths. Don't play to your weaknesses. My friend Phil taught me this years ago. I asked him if he wanted to go in on a beach house with me for the summer. Now, Phil's on the chubby side, and he says to me, A guy like me, I'm at a disadvantage trying to pick up girls at a beach. I'm fat, I'm out of shape, 
and I look at these guys with six-pack abs and my confidence goes down the toilet. I'm more of a ski house kind of guy. Put me at a ski resort and I'll have a bunch of ski bunnies taking a late night dip in the hot tub. Now, Phil always had himself a hot girl because he knew the environment that he excelled at. And he wasn't afraid to turn down invitations to places he knew he'd be playing against the odds. What I want to drill into your head is that you want to play the game in environments where you can shine. You want to play the game in places where you're comfortable. And you want to learn how to create home field advantage. Yup, you can actually create home field advantage anywhere you go. Let me ask you something. Have you ever hosted a party, like had a house party at your house, or you were just the host of the party? If you have, you probably realize that when you're the host of the party, you feel like the bell of the ball, and your mojo is sky high. You got ultimate home field advantage, and it's easy as hell to hook up. I mean, I, I've had parties where I, where multiple girls in, in one night, and it's like they come up to you just dying to, 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 to get with you. Here's the thing, though. You can actually manufacture that same exact feeling no matter where you go. I'll tell you more about that in the next video. But for now, I want to talk about the final killer of your mojo around women. I call it the totem pole. Let me explain. We all have sort of a mental idea of where we stand on the social totem pole. Of course, we all tend to add a few points to our own score, but in our minds, we unconsciously see ourselves as being somewhere on a scale of 1 to 10. And I'm not just talking about looks. I'm talking about the whole shebang. Looks, popularity, sexual experience, and so on. Uh, we also quickly size up where someone else fits in on the totem pole. When we meet another guy, we immediately sort of size ourselves up against him of, of who's higher on the totem pole. And we do this with women. Whenever we meet a woman... We quickly try to figure out where she is with us on the totem pole. And even though we're not consciously assigning them a number, trust me, we're giving them one. Now here's something else you might not know. The motivation to do something requires two things. A strong desire and a belief that you can actually do it. Without those two things, mojo and motivation are non-existent. So with that in mind... Let's go back to this idea of the totem pole. When we're out, if we're approaching girls that we know we can have because they're way lower than us on the totem pole, or we're approaching girls that we think are out of our league because they're higher than us on a on our, on our totem pole, our mojo evaporates. And we have no motivation to even give it a shot. Uh, have you ever felt like when you're talking to a fat girl or an ugly girl, you have no game? That's because you had no desire for her, and your mojo was in the toilet. So in order to put your mojo back into full effect, you got to have two things, a strong desire and a belief that you can do it. Now, a Russian scientist came up with the term flow, which I think is pretty damn close to mojo. Uh, he used the word flow, I call it mojo, same thing though. And based on his research, he concluded that the point of maximum mojo is when the challenge and the skill level are intertwined. So if you look at this chart I have on the screen, you can see that if the challenge and your skill level are too low, there's apathy. Um, if your skill is too high and the challenge is too low, then there's boredom. But on the other hand, if the challenge is too high and your skill is too low, then you have anxiety. So let's put this in simpler terms. If you got very low skills with women, then a woman you see as too hard of a challenge is going to produce anxiety instead of mojo, and your game will be off. Or if you go for a girl who's too easy and too little of a challenge and too low on the totem pole, it's going to produce boredom and apathy instead of mojo, and once again, your game will be off. So with that being said, we have our highest level of mojo when we go for a girl we see as a challenge that we have a shot at winning. So, if we see ourselves as a, a 5 on the totem pole, then the best girl for us to go for would be a 6 or a 7 on the totem pole. Any lower than that will be unmotivated, and any higher than that will feel too much anxiety. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I'm telling you that you can never go for really hot girls because they're too high on the totem pole. 
wrong. As you increase your scale, you can increase your challenge and you can go higher and higher on that totem pole. Now, the James Bond complex, playing on the road, and the totem pole are the chains that have kept you from approaching women. It's time to break free of these chains. 